really am loving Nomad Sculpt. It is a mobile sculpting powerhouse that includes quite advanced rendering and post-production features in order for you to present your sculpt. However, if you are in the possession of a Windows, Mac or Linux computer, you can push this presentation even further by using Cycles Renderer in Blender to render a more realistic clay material with softer shadows, and it's not too tricky to set up. So let's look at how to do this. First things first, we go up to our folder here, and if we scroll down, we can export as GLTF. Uh, you can email it, but I'm going to use my Google Drive. Then if we move over to our desktop or laptop PC, we can go over to blender.org forward slash download and just download the latest version of Blender. And after launching Blender, you will be presented with this default layout. Uh, we have a camera, we have a cube, we have a light. Uh, we can select the light and the cube together by just click dragging and then hit X on the keyboard to delete them. Then up to file, import, and you will find GLTF. Navigate to where we saved our Nomad Sculpt and hit import. Uh, mine has imported with some lights and cameras I set up in Nomad, so I'm just going to use the middle click button to orbit around to a good vantage point where I can again drag and select and delete the things that I don't want and scroll in for a closer look at our sculpture here. I'm also hitting shift and middle click to move the view around. Okay, first thing is first, let's introduce some lights into the scene. But before we do that, let's just switch on our material preview here, up on the top right hand side and toggle down the arrow here, switching on scene lights and scene world. And now we can shift A, go down to light and add an area light and then hit G on the keyboard to move the light and R to rotate, S to scale. And orbiting around, hitting G, R, just so we get it in a nice position. I'm also going to duplicate this light with shift and D and that automatically grabs it and we can move it over, left click to commit and R to rotate. Moving up a bit, I'm just gonna move it behind and rotate just so we have a bit of a backlight going on as well. Okay, that's looking good, but we want our clay material. So for my sculpt, I did it in multiple sections. So I'm just gonna select, say, the hat, jump over to our materials here go to base color and give it a clay-like material. Something like that looks kind of clay-like. I'm also gonna scroll down and increase our roughness up a little bit to something like that. And then hit A on the keyboard, which selects everything, and control L, which will link over the materials. Now we can get a bit fancier by utilizing the Cycles Renderer. So if we go up to the camera option here and under Render Engine, go from EV to Cycles. Uh, nothing's happened, that's fine. I'm just gonna also switch on GPU Compute so it uses my GPU and denoise. Now we can switch up here in the top right hand corner, our viewport shading to rendered. Now we can see some of the nice material qualities of a path tracing renderer. If some of the interface elements are getting in the way, we can just go up to this icon and uncheck show overlays. We can also, with our hat selected, go back into our material viewport here. And I'm going to drag the base color from base color to subsurface color and just introduce a tiny bit of subsurface. Let's go with 0 0.02. It's mucking up a little bit, so let's switch our method from random walk to Christensen Burley. That's looking a little bit better. I'm just gonna switch on our overlays and increase the power of our light, our key light here. Let's go up to 20 watts. Very cool. Now we just need to set up our resolution. So if we jump over to this printer icon, I'm gonna go with 1920 by 1920 a nice square resolution. 
and we can jump over to our outliner, select the camera and hold down Control, Alt and zero on the number pad. And that jumps our camera to our viewport here. And with it selected, we can also hit G just to make sure it's nice and central. Then undo the camera icon here. We can scroll all the way down to film, toggle that down and hit transparent. And this is so we can jump into an image processing app of our choice to add a background and further treatment. Okay, I'm calling that finished and I'm going to hit F12 to render. Okay, our render is complete. Now we can go up to image, save as, just make sure just make sure we are on PNG and RGBA, so we save our alpha and just save it. If you would like to add a little bit more of an advanced surface look, then we can also move our cursor over to the top right of our viewport here until we have a little crosshair and click and drag out a new window. Now we can go up to the top left of this window, change it from our 3D viewport to shader editor. I'm going to hit N to hide this panel. And then if we zoom in, we can drive our roughness with a procedural material to add a little bit more realism. And to do that, if we shift A with our cursor in our shader window and just go down to texture, musgrave. Now, if we click and drag our height out into our base color, we can see what it will look like. I'm just going to increase the detail to something like eight and decrease the dimension to something like 0.2. Now we need to introduce another node. Again, Shift A, Converter, Map Range. And we can drag this in between the two other nodes. And we can decrease our minimum from value to minus one, let's go to a minus 1.7 and increase our max to, my, uh, to plus 1.7, roughly. And that, I mean, this kind of gives us a nice marble look, which uh, if we decrease the roughness, we would definitely get. But we don't want that, we want our clay look. So let's unplug it from the base color and plug it into our roughness. And there we have some of the glossiness being broken up. Now we can increase the roughness by just increasing the negative value of our minimum here. Something like that looks good. Okay, I like our adjusted material here and I'm going to hit F12. And that's about it really. Hopefully this video helps you out in creating a slightly more realistic clay render for your Nomad sculpts. Thanks for watching.